Dating back to ancient Rome and Greece, the art of sculpting human effigies out of wax has captivated mankind. In fact, wax sculpture, as well as its popularity with the masses, has enjoyed a nearly seamless history from its earliest days all the way to today. Of course, the world's most prominent name in wax sculpture is Madame Marie Tussaud, who made her mark in history during the latter part of the 18th century having apprenticed in creating wax sculptures under the guidance of her uncle, Philippe Curtius. Even today, Madame Tussaud wax museums continue to enjoy wild popularity and may be found in major cities around the globe. But the history of wax sculpture and its most famous contributors by no means ends with Madame Tussaud. Catherine Marie Stuberg was born in 1911, the daughter of a long line of wax mannequin manufacturers. Catherine, however, was destined to steer her family's craft in an entirely new direction and take it to amazing new levels. Catherine, though secretly wanting to pursue a career in dancing, quickly excelled among her peers as a young yet accomplished sculptor. Upon finishing a likeness of the famous actress Mae West, Mae commented to Catherine, anyone who can take a lump of clay and make it look like me shouldn't be a dancer. From this point forward, Catherine's future was decided. Stuberg would go on to achieve her own fame in sculpting, capturing the likenesses of over 700 of the most famous personalities on earth. She even made an appearance in 1963 as the guest subject on the popular TV game show, What's My Line? What Miss Stuberg does is really is to create uh, uh, figures for wax museums. In 1971, Catherine, along with her husband Tom, designed, constructed, and opened the Parade of Presidents Wax Museum beneath Mount Rushmore in Keystone, South Dakota, featuring over 80 of her original creations, which remain in the collection to this day for visitors to see and enjoy. Now operating as the National Presidential Wax Museum, this lasting legacy of Catherine Stuberg remains the only wax museum in the world which features the likenesses of every American president. Following Catherine's passing in 1996, the privilege of continuing her vision first passed to her apprentice, Henry Alvarez, and most recently to the renowned English sculptor Jethro Crabb whose craftsmanship you will now see as he demonstrates the incredibly intricate process of creating our nation's leaders out of wax. The first step in creating a realistic wax figure is research, and lots of it. Hundreds of reference photos and videos of the person to be portrayed are collected, analyzed, and measured by the lead sculptor to get a feel for how the subject's facial structure and skin work together to produce their most iconic facial expressions. Since only the head and hands of a wax figure are actually made out of wax, a custom fiberglass body must first be created by a team of specialized casting artists. To do this, a live model is selected and covered first in a rubbery paste made of seaweed, and then with plaster bandages. Once dry, the model steps out of the mold and layers of fiberglass resin are laid inside. Once the resin dries, the cast is removed, revealing the fiberglass body of the wax figure. Meanwhile, the lead sculptor is busy sculpting the head out of clay. To do this, chunks of clay are pressed onto a support until a rough shape of the head emerges. The sculptor then uses precise measurements, reference photos, calipers, and delicate wood tools to shape the face and add delicate textures to the skin. The resulting clay head is placed atop the fiberglass body, and more clay is added and sculpted to form the neck. When the clay head and neck are complete, Thin layers of liquefied silicone rubber and fiberglass are applied, capturing the minute wrinkles and subtle skin textures that give the final figure its lifelike quality. Once dry, the cast is removed from the clay head and filled with molten Japanese beeswax tinted the color of skin. After a thick layer of wax has solidified, the wax head is removed and ready for eyes and hair. 
Eye sockets are carved out from the inside of the wax head, and realistic acrylic eyes are placed into the eye sockets and set in wax. Over 50,000 strands of long hair are carefully selected, dyed, and inserted one by one into the wax scalp using a hot needle tool. This tedious process alone can take even the most experienced artists up to a month to complete. The head is then given to another artist who carefully paints the face, adding even the tiniest freckle, blemish, and mole to make the face almost indiscernible from that of a real human. At this point, the figure's long hair is cut and styled, and the body, head, and hands are assembled and dressed in clothing carefully selected and tailored to mimic the style of the person portrayed. After four long months, the figure is finally complete and ready for exhibition. Now, enjoy an amazing journey through time as you're transported to some of the greatest moments in our nation's history. Welcome to the National Presidential Wax Museum.